The Picture Elements car in Home Assistant is one of the most flexible cards available for the Loveless UI, allowing us to add icons, text, and services on different parts of an image. Today I'm going to show you how to set up an image of a floor plan and add entities to that image using the Picture Elements car. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. So here I have an image of a floor plan that I created. There are a few apps out there that you can use to create this, but one that I highly recommend is called Magic Plan. It is a very easy to use app and is available on both iOS and Android. You can create a floor plan for free and export an image for just $3, which is pretty cheap for all the features that you get and also how easy it is to use. So I definitely recommend it. If you would like to check it out, you can find a link in the description below. All right, so once you have an image of a floor plan, you need to save it in the www folder. If you don't have this folder yet, you will need to create it inside the Home Assistant config folder. Now, open the loveless.yaml file and set up a separate view for the floor plan. You also want to set up the view as a panel, so like that the picture element card displays in full width. Then define the card type as a picture element and below add the floor plan image using the path forward slash local forward slash and then the name of the picture including the file extension. All right, so now below you can start adding all the elements that you want on top of the floor plan. There are a few elements that you can use. The first one that we're going to look at is the state batch, which allows adding sensors to the image. Define the element type as a state batch. Then for the entity, enter the name for the sensor that you want to display. Now to specify the position of the elements on the image, you will need to use the style variable and set the value for the top and left variables. If you increase the percentage for the top, it will position the element more towards the bottom. And the same thing goes for the left. If you increase the value, it will move the element more towards the right. The style variable uses CSS, so there are several things that you can change. For example, if you want to change the size of the font, you can change it using the variable font size. Save the changes to the file and refresh the Loveless UI, and you will now have a floor plan image in a full panel view and with the new state batch created. There are no other variables available for the state batch that you can use, but to add more functionality to the sensor entity, you could use the state label. With the state label, you can add the same sensor and add some text either before or after the entity using the variables prefix or suffix. You can also use the variables tap action and hold action to either open the more info pop-up, call a service, or navigate to another view. Here's an example for the same weather sensor. I set up the element type as a state label. For the entity, I enter the same weather sensor. Then I added some text to show before the entity using the prefix variable. The text is also enclosed within quotes, so a space could be added at the end to separate the text from the entity value. I also added the tab action variable and I set it to navigate. And then below, I use the navigation path variable set to the view where I want to navigate to. Lastly, I use the style variable to set the position of the label and I also change the font size. Now the state label shows up with the entity data and when clicked on, it's going to navigate to the view that is specified. So apart from the state batch and the state label, you also have the state icon, which allows adding entity icons like switches and lights to see their current state. With the state icon, you can also use the variables tab action, hold action, navigation path, and service. Here's an example that I set up for my living room light. I defined the element type as a state icon. For the entity, I added a switch that is connected to my lamp, and I also give it a title, which it shows up when I hover over the icon. I set up the tab action as a toggle, so like that when I click on it, it turns the light on and off. By default, the icons are a bit small, but we can make them bigger by adding the options Iron Icon Height and Iron Icon Width to the style variable. Now, there is also the icon element, which works similar to the state icon. The only difference is that it doesn't show the state of the entity. It also has the same variables available with the addition of the icon variable to be able to define the icon that we want to display for the specific entity. Here's an example how I use this element. I set up an icon element for my living room camera and I defined the icon that I wanted to use for this entity. Then I added the variable iron icon fill color 
to match the color of the icon with my current theme. Now, I didn't add the tab action variable because by default when you tap on the icon, it shows the more info pop-up. But if you want to set something else, you can always set that variable, like on this example where I set up an icon to navigate to another view. Alright, so those were the state elements available plus the icon element. Now, let's take a look at the service button, which allows adding a button to call a service. A perfect example for this would be to create a master button that would turn off all your lights at the same time. Let me show you an example. After you define the element type as a service button, add a title that will be the label for the button. The service set it to home assistant that turn off. Then set the variable service data with the entity ID group that all lights. If you're like me and you have some light entities and also some smart switches connected to lamps, then you can create a script like this to group all the lights together and then add the script name to the service variable. Now, anytime you want to turn off all your lights at once, instead of tapping on each individual light, you can use the service button to do it quickly. So it is definitely an essential element to set up on your floor plan, especially if you have several lights. All right, last but not least, let's take a look at the image element, which allows adding additional images on top of the main picture. It is very convenient because you can create some cool effects, like for example, making a room on a floor plan look darker when the light is off and then brighter when the light is turned on. You also have access to the variables that we used on the previous element with the addition of the variables image, camera image, state image, filter, and state filter. Okay, so for example, to make the room look darker when the lights are off, you will first need to make a copy of the floor plan and crop the image to just the room that you need. After that, save the image in the www folder, then in the loveless file, define the element type as an image. Set up the light entity for that room, then add the tap action variable, and if you want to tap anywhere on the image to turn the light on and off, then set it to toggle. Otherwise, set it to none if you are using a state icon to toggle the light. Now, add the variable image and add the path for the new cropped image. Then, using the variable state filter, set up the brightness for the on and off state for the light entity. Now, position the image using the style variable and also add the width to specify the size of the image. Now, any time that you turn the light on and off, the specific room in the floor plan will change between a normal image and a darker image. Another way that we can set up the same example is by using two cropped images for a room, one with a normal brightness and the other one that will be darker. Or you can do like me and set up a vignette to give it a better look when the light is off. Then instead of using the filter and the state filter variables, you can use the state image and set up the two images on the on and off state. All right, so there's a lot more ways that you can use the picture elements card and make it work better for your own setup. I hope that this walkthrough of the available elements can help you accomplish that. Now, on future videos, I also want to go over some of the available custom cards for Lovelace. I already have a few in mind that I want to cover, but I would definitely like to get some more feedback, so definitely let me know in the comments below. Alright guys, like always, thank you for watching, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I will see you in the next video.